India has a very unique position in the world. Next to Israel, we are the only country totally surrounded by failed states. I like to ask the question, is this a result of not having a national aspiration, allowing each state, each city, each district to do whatever they want, so that we have such an asymmetric development and so much of disempowerment that we have created already a lot of fragmentation. That is 40% of India is lawless. If you push this another 10 years, what is the guarantee that you will not look like Afghanistan? Then let's not talk about global leadership. What I want you to think about is 500 Rajas lived in this country before independence. The British did not want independence. In spite of all that, without television, without internet, without radio, without large number of newspapers, we created a common vision for all of India. So we are divisive, we are asymmetric in our development. If we don't create a common vision, if we don't help each other, if we don't pull together, we will have a totally divided, fragmented country that can fall apart. So the danger, this is a national security issue. This is not just about economic development. So I am presenting the potential as an opportunity. So the aspiration cannot be only for the community or only for the individual. In other words, you must worry about the whole country. Otherwise, we will fragment very fast. You already see the fragmentation. You must imagine the new India. If when Gandhiji said Purna Swaraj, if somebody got up in the meeting, of course none of us had the courage, nobody had the courage to challenge him. But let us assume somebody stood up and said, Gandhiji, can you tell me how to do it? What could he have said? Could he have given the means? Of course not. What I want you to think about, put a stake in the ground of what the India of your dreams and then work backwards to say how to make it happen. If you start from where you are and try to look at what India can be, you can only stay at the art of the possible, <coughs> not think of a new India. How do you create aspirations beyond resources? How do you fold the future in? And what we have to do in India, you cannot go and benchmark anybody. No society has transformed a billion people economically and socially and culturally in a short period of time. So we have to focus on next practice, not on best practice. All of us will have to say, we have to radically rethink our policies and practices. And we have to create a shared commitment to goals. And certainly, we have to increase our aspiration level. We have aspirations, but not big enough. We have to do it in an emerging context, social context. I say income inequality is going to be a bigger problem for us than poverty. More than income inequality, I think opportunity inequality is a bigger problem. Lifestyle inequality is a bigger problem. Why are the next slides so powerful? Because it's opportunity inequality. Why is there so much cash-based politics for reservations? It is because opportunity inequality. So we want to really think beyond incomes to opportunities and lifestyles. We must create transparent solutions. In fact, as long as you have transparent solutions, call it markets if you will, but transparent solutions. But also, we want to create access and affordability to all people. India cannot be changed without scale. If we don't touch the lives of 100 million people, you are not making a difference. So scale is fundamental. Same thing, we have to protect our environment, but all our systems are stressed. Water, forest, deforestation, pollution, uh, it's wastage. Tremendous problems. And of course, transaction costs, bad governance. I say, first change in mental models. Let's think big. We have lots of data, but decisions are political, ideological, not data driven. And I think that has to change. We may have pushed group rights beyond a point. We have to rebalance it and bring it back to some individual rights, not just all group rights. Corruption must be treated as treason, and I'm very clear. Corruption is all our responsibility. No corrupt country is rich. Some people in the country may be rich, the country is not rich. No corrupt country develops the human resources. And no country that does not develop its human resources is rich. The desire for individual advantage 
masking the collective requirements of other people is creating a very distorted view of what India can be. The question is, the message for me is, can we be honest when no one is looking? Or should be honest only when everybody is looking? I'll leave it to you. So I just say, let's develop an innovation sandbox. Let us assume six core assumptions. First is we need scale. Second, we must be environmentally sensitive and rigorously impose environmental standards. We must change the value proposition for everything we do. Whereas primary education, college education, make it affordable to everybody. We must have be market-based. We must focus on social equity and public good. And we must respect the rule of law. If all of us only agree to these six, and every decision that we make, we went through this and said, am I following these six principles? And the answer is yes. And we make our decisions. I think we can create the India of the future. And you can't say, I'll only take the three which are interesting, but I don't like social equity or I don't like lack of corruption and fairly transparent systems. You can't pick and choose. You have to take it as a package. If you do, I think India will be very different. This is what I shared with the group in CII in 1989. I said you can look at the world as local firms and global firms, small domestic market and world scale domestic market. What is the advantage of the United States, one of the world's largest markets, and also home for some of the best companies? So is Germany, and so is Japan. The question is, China and India did not have a domestic market of world size, neither did they have any global companies. So I said, maybe by 2000 we can get there. And we were fairly close. I think we can only do it if you can get our imagination right, passion and courage for making India different. Some analysis, yes, but pure analysis will not get us there. We must have the belief in ourselves and in our country to get there. But it's not only for India, it's not only for our communities, not only for our cities, but it is for the whole world this is important, not just for India. Of course it's important for India, but it's also important for the world because we represent one-fifth of humanity. This is one person's view of what India can be.